I chose this uh, this subject to talk about this subject migrating from Oracle to PostgreSQL. Um, so let's start a little bit about myself. My name is Mariel Cherkaski. I'm 23 years old. I served in the Israeli Air Force as an Oracle DBA and system administrator. Uh, I left the Army one year ago and I joined Bezek Ben Lumi, which is, I think, the biggest ISP in Israel. Um, I'm studying computer science in the College of Management and I started months ago, two months ago, writing a blog about PostgreSQL. For people who, who want to start their way in this world, I started learning Postgres a year ago when I joined Basic International and it wasn't easy. Uh, I just knew Oracle from the army and I, I think that it might help you and it might help people who want to start their steps in this world. Um, you, you can check it out during the session if it will be boring or after it. So let's start. So wh about what I'm going to talk about. So during my work at Basic International, um, I was given a mission to migrate systems from Oracle to PostgreSQL. Now, I, di I didn't mention it, but I would like you to participate during the session because I think that it would be less boring because it's very theoretical. So if you have answers, feel free to ask. And if you have just, if you want just say something or mention something, feel welcome. Okay, so those are the topics that I'm going to talk about. All those questions from the beginning, why should we migrate from Oracle to Postgres? I mean, we have production databases that are working with systems that are working. Why, why, why should we do that? It, it's a mess. We need to learn a lot. It's, we, we spend a lot of time and money about it. And why, why should we do it? I mean, um, and as a common question, is it free? Money is a very big factor when you think about moving to Postgres. I will talk about it also in the next slides. And those are the questions that I will focus on. If you have any other questions, again, feel free to ask. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, why should we move from Oracle to Postgres? Someone have any ideas? Okay, so I marked those three points, and as you can see, the cost is the biggest one. Um, let's start from the beginning. Postgres is an open source database, and that's a huge benefit. The, commu the community, the whole community of PostgreSQL is part of Postgres. When, when I talk about Oracle, Oracle, Oracle isn't an open source database. And when we have problems, we contact Oracle. If we need patches or something like that, we contact Oracle. And Oracle supplies us Oracle's tools. When we have an open source database, every one of us can take a huge part of the growing and of the improving process of, of the database. And I think that it's, it's a very big factor. And it, yeah, it, it, I think that it's what makes Postgres unique. I mean, it, it isn't the only open source database, but I think that he, it has a huge potential and it's a very big factor, I think. And the second point, it's very easy to handle, maintain, and install PostgreSQL. I mean, I'm a DBA, but I think that everyone can do it. To be honest, uh, in our company, there are developers, and system guys that install PostgreSQL only just, just to play with it. I mean, no guys only can do it. And, and you don't need to have any experience with databases before you start, start your steps in this world. I mean, it, it's very, very easy. You have the documentation, which is clear. And I think that I, think that I made my point. Well, and the, op the, the benefit of the open source is that it's easy to handle PostgreSQL. Okay, and the next point is the cost, which I think that is very important for all the enterprises in Israel and overseas. Yeah, cost is very important. I mean, what is the cost of 
Oracle's license. Um, I think I asked, asked my boss, and I think that the price list, you can see that one CPU cost about $40,000. Maybe I mistake. I have a mistake, maybe? No? Something about that. One CPU or one core? One core, yeah. One core is about $40,000. 46? Okay, so so if, if you think about it, if you have, <laughs> well, it's not it's not free, but uh, and it's very expensive. But if you have a lot of servers in your enterprise, it's a lot, a lot of money. I mean, and PostgreSQL, the community edition, and not the fork, they are for free. You can download it, you can play with it, you can do what you want with it. And that, I think, what what? Okay, that, that's another aspect, you are right. I'm going to talk about Okay, so I'll talk about the migration process. What, what about the cost of the migration process? You just asked about. So when my boss told me that, he, he, gave him a, he gave me a mission. I want you to migrate from Oracle to Postgres, one of our little systems that we had in the company. So we had two options. We can use the community edition, which is free, which you can download from the uh, Postgres, PostgreSQL uh, site. Or you can use a fork, uh, like many, there are a lot of forks. EDB, I think uh, PostgreSQL Pro has also, yeah. And, and it costs money. If, if you use a special edition, it costs money, yeah. And when you, want, when you just want to try Postgres and you're not sure, if that's a suitable database for you, I don't think that it's the right solution. So I, I didn't go for that solution because I think that it was the easy one. So I downloaded the community edition, which is the basic PostgreSQL edition, which is fine, yeah? It has a lot of abilities and it's great. You, you don't have to, to, to buy for. It's cost money. And after you, download, after you downloaded the PostgreSQL community edition, you have also two options. As I said, PostgreSQL is an open source database, which has mean that everyone can develop external tools that can help you migrate from Oracle, uh, MySQL, SQL Server, it doesn't matter. So you can buy an external tool and that costs money. Yeah. Or you can do the second option. You can choose the second option, which is to search for open source tools that might help you and might not. It depends on what tool you use. So the, the path that I took was free. <laughs> My boss told me, I want you to do it for free. I don't want to spend money on it because I don't know if I will use PostgreSQL. You know, you, you can't spend money on, on a fork and then you won't like the result. So my point of view, he was right. We are using the, only the community edition in our company. And I did a few migration projects and it, it's up to you what you choose to do. So I would like to talk about migration plans in general. Ah, and about your question, you, uh, you said, and it was right, uh, the migration process is free because you don't download, you, you don't use a specific fork and you download the PostgreSQL edition from the site, it's for free. And you use open source tools, which might be for free, but Time is money, and I spent about half a year on my first migration project, and, and that's also money. So as a manager, you, sh you should consider that when you, when, you decided, when you decide to move or to migrate a new system. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, well, when you're right, but let me tell you this, when I tried to migrate a new system, it was while I wa was learning PostgreSQL. I didn't know Postgres. My mission was to migrate Postgres, but on my way, I had also to learn Postgres. I mean, I, I didn't know, I, I didn't have any basics in, in that database. So when I said it was half a year to migrate a little system, it was because I had to, to study all, all about the, the database. You can't migrate from Oracle to, to a different database with, without any knowledge about the second database that you're migrating to.
Okay, so I'm going to talk about migration plans in general, not specific to PostgreSQL. <coughs> I wrote that based on my experience with Postgres. So it might make your DBA's uh, life easier to, to check it out. Um, okay, so the first thing I think that you should learn PostgreSQL or any database that you're migrating to because it's very hard to migrate to a database that you don't know. You need to maintain it, uh, you need to help the application work, you need to, to do a lot of things and when you don't really know the, the database that you are migrating to, it will be a very problematic issue. Okay, so the second point, learn your system. When I tried to migrate my, my first system, I didn't knew it well, I didn't, I didn't go deeper to understand how it works and, and that was a big mistake that I had. So wh what does it mean? I, I marked some points about it. How much schemas do you have in your, in your system? I mean, your app, how much schemas are involved? If you have three, four, five schemas, which aren't so big, it might be easy. As much as, you ha as, much as more schemas you have, it will be more problematic for you. Um, wh what objects do you have in your, in your schemas? I mean, just tables it's, and it's just data. If, it just, if there are just tables with data, it will be pretty easy. But if you are talking about, I don't know, views, materials, views, uh, DB links, uh, tables with blobs, it will be a little bit hard, but you can do it because we have a lot of open source tools that will help you. Um, okay, think the, the third uh, point. Think about all the operations that are related to your systems and what, what exactly I mean. If you have scripts or jobs <coughs> sorry, that uh, doing some tasks in your app, in your, in your database, consider it. Think about everything before you start the migration process. Don't start it if you didn't think about all the related issues that might happen. Okay, so when I started working on my migration project, <coughs> I did it alone, which was a huge obstacle. I think that before you start, gather up all the guys that are relevant to your system and tell them, okay, I'm going to migrate from Oracle to Postgres and I will need your help. It's definitely, I'm telling you this, you will need as much as help as you, you can get. Okay, <coughs> so five is find the right migration tool. Where, well, the, the first thing that you will do if you working as my, in my path is searching in Google free migration tools from Oracle to PostgreSQL. That's the first thing that I did and I promise to you there are a lot of tools that are considered free but the stupid tools that doesn't really work. The good tools, the op good open source tools, it's hard to find them. It's, you need to spend some time to find them but you, you can do it. I mean, they're out there. I found some of them. I will explain about them. And you will check, check them out if you want after the session. Um, okay, six, <coughs> seven and eight, they are coming as a package. And what does it mean? My, start migrating your system to a test environment. Do your test on, on that test environment. Uh, check your performance. If you need tuning, indexes, I don't know, change the the structure of tables to partitions. Um, a good, a, okay, a good point is parameter. Postgres field tuning, working. In order to tune Postgres, you need to work with the conf file of Postgres. So use it. I mean, don't, don't stop after you, yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry. Don't, don't stop after you migrated your system. Try tuning it, check your performance. It, I, I promise to you, you won't have the same performance at the beginning. I, did, I didn't have the exact performance in any project that I had. <coughs> so those points are just to make sure that you don't forget, that you don't end your, your migration project after you migrated your, your system. <coughs> so 
Now we'll talk about my migration tools. I mean, they are not mine. These are the tools that I use during my migration projects. Um, the first one is Aura 2 pg which, which is an amazing tool. Um, okay, so what, what, is, what it really does, it's, it's taking the objects in your schema. You, you need to define what schema, no, okay. I had a, a different presentation with pictures, but uh, sorry, I don't, I don't have it here. What, what it really does is taking all your objects in your schema and converting it into into a different language. I mean, if, if those tables, then you will have the SQL script that creates your table. <coughs> sorry. If you have data in your tables, it will generate the copy command to copy all your data as a bulk into your, ta into your table. If, if those, okay, one point that I should mention is that it has problems with functions and packages. And what, are the, what does that mean? In PostgreSQL, we don't have packages. We have schemas. I mean, if you want to, to, to sum up all the functions to one place, you should create a schema. And that's what this tool does about functions. And it doesn't convert well the, the PLSQL code, so you should check out your functions before you import them into your PostgreSQL database. <coughs> it very reminds, it remind me the XPDP and PDP utility of Oracle, if you know it, of course. And it has a lot of other options which are pretty cool. Um, the second tool that I had, that I used, is Oracle FTW by Lawrence Alpe. Uh, what it really does, is, okay, in my, in my uh, system, I had dblinks to a different Oracle database, but I didn't, want to I, I didn't want to migrate the second database that I had to Postgres. So this, does, this tool, tool allowed me to access the data on my remote Oracle database from Postgres. It, it really solved the, the problem of dblinks from Postgres to a different Oracle database. And it, it's cool because it supports Postgres support. And one point that you might ask yourself what about statistics and, and explanation and explain, and, explain, and explain plans. So it got statistics on the Oracle table, that, that on the remote Oracle table. And it got a statistic, and, and, and the explain plans are the identical explain plans in your remote Oracle database. Yeah. that you can access objects in, in Oracle that are geometrical. That is the point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so the first tool that I used, over to PG, <laughs> he handles it automatically, but I don't promise to you 100% that it will work for all the types. I mean, when you have lobs and things like that, you should check it out. I didn't have a scenario when I had. Hmm. I, to be honest, I, I, I didn't check it out, to be honest with you. I, so I don't know. But I, I can check it out for you if you want. Uh, just send me a mail or something and I will check it out. Yeah, I don't know how O2PG ha handles it, to be honest. What? Is it what? No, no. Okay, so, okay. You can see here the, the process that you do when you create <coughs> a dblink to a remote Oracle database. You need to create a foreign server. You, you give him the, the details of the server that you are accessing. You need to put the TNS names record in here. After that, you need to grant permissions to a specific user to use that server, and then you create a foreign table. You can, you can, if you want, I think Michael can send you the presentation after it, and you can check it out. Okay, so because I had problems with functions in, in, inside, I mean, when I converted functions with Aura to PG from Oracle to Postgres, I had a lot of internal functions of Oracle that were used, like UTL file. In, in PostgreSQL, we, we don't have <coughs> an internal fu function that is called UTL file. And in my code, 
in the code that I migrated, I had a use of that function. So wh what can I do? I mean, I, I saw that developers use select from dual. I don't have a dual table in my, in my PostgreSQL database. So what, what can I do? Well, ORFC, <coughs> great extension, allowed me to use a lot of internal functions in Oracle in PostgreSQL. It created a lot of schemas. A UTL file, for example, is a schema in my database. And I can use all its functions in Oracle that are in Oracle in PostgreSQL. So what it allowed me is to, I, I didn't change the code itself because a lot of internal functions from Oracle are now available in PostgreSQL. And that is the point that I mentioned here. <coughs> okay, so I think the last, no, it's not the last, sorry. Another good tool that I use is PG Loader. And why, why did I use it? Let me ask you a question. If you have a partition table, with a unique index on it. And you want to import a lot of data at the bulk. How can you do it in PostgreSQL? Well, anybody, no? Well, the, the solution is using copy. That's what it's meant, meant to. The copy command using, uh, we can use it to insert data at the bulk. But the problem that I had <coughs> is that copy failed. Meant, once copy fails for one specific row, the entire process fails. So I search for a system or for a tool that will allow me will allow me to have advanced options about bulking data, about inserting data as a bulk. And I found this tool, which, which is amazing. Yeah, he, he doesn't do only that. He also migrates from different databases to PostgreSQL, but I didn't use that function because I didn't have to. And what it's cool about this tool that it allowed me to insert a lot of data at the bulk. And when I had a problematic row <coughs> that I entered the table, which also, which, which, all was, which was already in the table, the unique constraint worked and I got an error, but the tool itself continued working and did it fail. So that's all about this tool. And the next two tools are, are uh, quite interesting. RepMGR <coughs> is, is a solution for replication. I mean, PostgreSQL have, has streaming replication, which is great. But RepMGR is a cool interface. It, it's a cool tool that allows me to manage the replication very, very easily. I, I don't have it here, but I, I wrote another presentation with, with examples from my databases and Michael will send it to you if you would like and you will see the examples and pictures from my database, how it looks, it, how it really looks. <coughs> so if you have in Oracle RAC, it, it might be a good solution for you. I mean, and it's for free, yeah? Um, okay. The, the replication is happening. It, it, the replication is based on the streaming replication of Postgres. It's, it's just a tool to allow you, that allows you to manage it more easily. <coughs> okay, so PG pool. It's also a very common tool in the, in the community. It's, it's great because he offers a lot of, of functions. He can manage your replication like RepMGR. He can do pooling, he can do load balancing. Um, <coughs> that's all I think. And I chose that tool because I had to have a load balancer. I, I had to have, I, it, it a must, I think, in a company. When you have a few nodes of PostgreSQL in your cluster, when you have standbys and master, it will be stupid not to use this tool or a load balancer because you want all the selects to go to the, to the slaves. You don't want, you want to use all your resources. And this tool as a load balancer allows it. Um, again, also, I, I add some pictures of the PG pool in my databases environment, but it's not in that presentation. And some other tools that you might check out, I, I think PG Bouncer is like a proxy. He, he manage connections. PG Barman, which a cool tool that, that reminds Armen and 
it, it's very, it very reminds Armen, and it manages your backups and restore, PostGIS, and PG bulk load, which it, it's a tool that allows you also to insert data as a bulk, and it quite reminds me the PG loader that I mentioned in the last in the last slides, and that's all. You have any questions? Something? No? Great. Thank you.